Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to derive Newton's second law for rotation. That is, the net torque acting on an object is equal to the time derivative of that object's or that system's angular momentum. This is sometimes called Newton's second law for rotation because the actual second law is for dynamics. It is for linear motion and it is that the net force equals the time derivative of linear momentum. You can already see the relation, the similarities between the two. So that is why it's called Newton's second law for rotation. All right, so how do we prove this? Well, to start off, we want to consider the right side and try to arrive on the left side. So let me write it. The time derivative of angular momentum is equal to. What is the definition of angular momentum? Well, it is, let me write the derivative first. So by definition, the angular momentum is r, the radius, cross p, the linear momentum. This is the definition of angular momentum, as I said. So this will equal, well, we see that we have the derivative of a product. It's a cross product, but it is a product at the end of the day. So how do we find the derivative of a product? Well, about this, I have a video. You can access it from the cards right now and also from the descriptions part. We will use the product group. It tells us we take the, uh, we take the derivative of the first one. It is going to be dr by dt. We multiply it by the derivative of the, uh, but no, no, not by the derivative, by the second one. So it's going to be P. However, we need to put a cross in between because we have a cross product, not a normal product. And uh, ordinary product is not defined for vectors. You have dot product or you have cross product. All right. You don't have another option because these two are not scalars. They are, uh, they are vectors. So we put the cross product plus the derivative of the second one, dp by dt times the uh, times the first one you could say this and and cross the uh, first one not the time not times we should say cross you could say this but this would be wrong there is a very subtle but a huge uh, mistake here and the mistake is that the order of the cross product matters you can't say let's say you have vector a cross b you can't say that this is equal to b cross a this is not correct that's why we need to change the order in the second term and it's going to be like so i hope this part makes sense and if it doesn't i can make a video about cross product and how it works all right so we have this and now this is going to be equal to Let's consider the first term. What is this derivative? The time derivative of the radius, the position. That is, by, defini by definition, the velocity vector. It is V. Cross, what is linear momentum? It is, by definition, mass times the velocity. Then we have plus. Radius is still there. Cross, ooh, what is this? We encountered this at the beginning of the video. I talked about Newton's second law for linear motion, not for linear, for translational, or you could call it linear, perhaps, as well. I, I'm not sure. For uh, translational, let's say. For translational motion, Newton's second law tells us this is the net force acting on an object. So we can substitute that. F net. Here, here, we will say an interesting thing about the first term. What does a cross product mean? Well, in a cross product, you are interested in the component of a vector that is perpendicular to the other vector. 
So we have V and we have MV. These two are parallel. M is a scalar. It doesn't change the direction. So the velocity and the momentum vectors point in the same direction. That means there is no component that is perpendicular. That's why it is also zero. Or another way to think about is that when you have a cross product, the magnitude is found by multiplying the two vectors, the magnitude of the two vectors times the sine of the angle between the two vectors. Sine of the angle in this case is going to be zero because the angle between momentum and velocity is zero. The angle between them is zero. Why? Because as I said, they are in the same direction. That's why sine of zero is the factor that we have, which equals zero. And then plus we have R cross F net. R cross F is going to be torque. It is by definition torque. And since we have the uh, net force for our force, we are going to get the, t uh, the net torque. Obviously, 0 plus the net torque will give us the net torque. And look at this. On the right, we have the net torque. And on the left, we have the time derivative of the angular momentum. So we've done it. We derived Newton's second law for rotational motion. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please write them in the comment section. I hope to see you in another video. Until then, take care.